Sydney's headlands are the perfect spot for whale watching. Every year around April, humpback whales start heading north, leaving the icy Antarctic waters to travel to breeding grounds up in the Great Barrier Reef. It's a fair hike, especially considering that they fast, often for months, to get there and back. Humpbacks make the longest known migration of any mammal, about 10,000 kilometres for a round trip. The reason for the annual migration to sunny Queensland is precisely because it's warm and sunny, and that matters for their offspring. The warm sheltered waters, even in winter, are the perfect place to have their calves. As you know when you are swimming, your body heats quickly lost to the water around you. Whales have a thick layer of fat, their blubber, just under their skin, that protects their core body heat from being sucked into the cold polar water. But when the calf is born, it doesn't have thick enough layer of blubber. They need to gain this protective layer and really quickly. Presumably calves could survive being born in the freezing southern ocean waters, but it would take an enormous amount of their energy just to keep warm. That leaves them little energy for growth, and the faster a whale grows, the sooner they can start to reproduce. So the warm waters of northern Queensland provide an ideal start for the whale of calves. But where do the calves get all that energy for growing from? During the first year of their lives, whales, like all mammals, only drink their mother's milk. The humpback mothers produce milk that's about 40% fat. Compare this to cow's milk that we typically drink, which is about 4% fat. That high fat content helps the whale calves gain blubber quickly. It also gives the milk a funny texture. It, it's like toothpaste. The mothers spend as much time with their calves in the warm waters as possible but they can't stay for too long. After many months of fasting and making and providing her calf that fat rich milk, the mother whale needs to travel back south to eat. So around July or August, the humpbacks start swimming south to return to the Southern Ocean. Once more they pass Sydney's coast and we can see them in large numbers. In the Southern Hemisphere, they feed mainly on krill, small shrimp-like creatures and the humpbacks that migrate past Sydney and all humpbacks in the Southern Hemisphere spend their summer feeding in the Southern Ocean, the waters around Antarctica. Although the humpbacks feed for only a few months each year, the krill is in such high densities that the humpbacks quickly put that weight they lost back on. Until the 1980s, humpbacks were hunted in our waters. I grew up on a beach that overlooked Tangalooma Whaling Station in Queensland an operation that harvested the East Australian humpback population. The station had closed before I was born, but it was not until I was an adult that I realised why. Whaling at places like Tangaluma, as well as illegal whaling, had decimated the population. Where the original population had been over 30,000 whales, there were only a few hundred left. So whaling stopped not because of protests or conservation campaigns, because it didn't make the money anymore. Today, well, it's a completely different story. The Eastern Australian humpback population has recovered incredibly well. In fact, the increase of 10 to 11% each year is phenomenal rate of population growth for such a large mammal. But this hasn't been the same story for all whale populations, not even all humpback populations. Some have still not recovered from whaling. But for us, here off Sydney, there are now about 24,000 humpbacks that migrate in the same population moving along the east coast of Australia. So don't miss seeing humpbacks as they pass Sydney. They move along our coast from May to November. Ironically, that population today is still worth a fortune, but now it's tourist dollars.